Welcome to Affording College with Aaron Green, founder and president of College Liftoff. All right. Thanks, Deep Throat Guy. Okay, so the topic today. Help. Do I have enough money to send my kid to college? Let's talk about that for a quick second here. The question shouldn't be, do I have enough money to send my kid to school? The question is, what should I be paying for school? That's the question. What should I actually be paying for college? That's really the question we want to be able to answer here. We've got to change our attitude on this. In fact, we've got to change our whole mindset. College is not the same across the board for every single cost structure. Every single time somebody walks up to you and says, you need to spend $50,000 a year on this, that, that doesn't compute if you're going to school for English Lit or Greek Mythology. We've got to be able to answer this in better ways. Let's talk about this in a different way then. College, not as a buy in the sense of the way we've bought it before, but college as an investment. College is an investment just like any other. College is a lot like buying a house. When you buy a house, you're buying two things. You buy a property and you buy a mortgage. College is built the exact same way. You buy into the academics of a school and then you buy into the financial aid package. You put them together to get the best value for education. So as an easy example, you wouldn't spend $300,000 on a house that's appraised $120,000. So you don't want to spend $90,000 on an education that only yields you $30,000 a year. That doesn't make any sense. We've been thinking about this all wrong for all of these years, and that's led us to the current cost structure and the sticker price problem, which we have. College will cost you between twenty dollars to $60,000 a year on sticker. That's absolutely insane. There's $1.4 trillion in student loan debt, second only to mortgage debt in this country. Think about that for a second. When else would you buy something of that magnitude at that cost structure and not ask yourself why? Why in the world am I doing this? College is a consumer purchase. It's an asset, actually. The first asset your student is really going to buy in their life. So let's think about college in a little bit of a different way. In fact, let's replace the word college with tool. A tool is used to construct, to build things. In the end, that's what we're doing. What we'll be doing is actually starting and building a direction for your kid's professional life with the tool known as college. That's what really what, you, what we're using college for. So there's an inherent value to a tool especially one that can help you complete a project. Same goes for college. There's inherent value to college itself. That's not to say it should be absolutely free by any measure because it's something that we can measure and get value from. What we're really saying is that not all bachelor's degrees are created equal. That's what we're really talking about. You can go to school for accounting or you can go to school for Greek mythology and classic studies. What's going to be the financial outcome of those two degrees after undergrad? Let's think about that. Because that's the real question. That's the value of what you're buying. Now, that's not to say your kid shouldn't go into certain fields. We're not talking about that. That's not saying even your college-bound student should really sacrifice their interests for a particular career path. Because the truth is, we never want them to chase money. You want to do something you know you love. You want to know so- to do something you know you're going to go into and enjoy. You have to enjoy what you do. But what we do have to do is start understanding the world of work better and how that matches up with the student's interests and skills, and using that as a directional piece in order to define what tool we need, basically what college we should be picking, because the truth is not every school is great at everything. So we've talked about this before, but you have to look at job placements. You have to look at average starting salaries. You have to see what is this program doing for me once I graduate. That's the real measurable here. It's not just... The school, the name, the pedigree anymore. It's about what is this school doing for me once I graduate? Can they get me into a job? Are they reputable in the field that I'm going into? That's how we want to establish value. Because then we can start actually seeing how much we should be buying college based off of that number. Off of what should I expect upon graduation versus what the sticker price just really is on the door. So the original question is, do I have enough saved for my kid to go to college. Let's change that and ask, how much should I actually be paying for my kid to go to college? That's what we do at College Liftoff every day, is work with families individually and find out how much should you really be paying for college. The next question many parents have, arguably, should I be paying for my kid's education at all? Well, that's a good question too. It's their education, right? Well, check back in to part two of this one and we'll talk about that. College Liftoff can help empower you to make college affordable for your student. If you want to learn more about your options, Aaron will be responding directly to your emails. 
Email him a question at Aaron at collegeliftoff.com. Thanks for listening to Affording College with Aaron Green of College Liftoff. If you'd like more information, visit collegeliftoff.com.